Well, hello, and welcome to Coffee Break with God, the podcast where we explore the wonders of faith in everyday life. I'm your host, Monica, and I'm so glad you're here. Each episode, we'll have a conversation with a guest who will share their stories, insights, and wisdom on how they connected with God in the midst of their busy and chaotic world. So grab your favorite cup of coffee, tea, or whatever you like, and join us on a coffee break with God. Well, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Graceful Warrior and our seasonal episode of Coffee Break with God. Hey, we have a great guest with us today, and it is a veteran. Uh, He was in the military for many, many years. We're going to get down to all the nitty gritty with him. He has started a ministry called Fireborn Ministry. You may have heard of him on charisma podcast charisma network he writes for charisma um him and his wife um have done a tremendous tremendous work for the lord they have started fireborn ministries like i said and they have already gotten many classes on there like e-courses on there of the first beginning levels of learning prophecy um learning the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and a whole bunch of other classes. So without further ado, we're going to bring in a Jared and hear his great story of everything the Lord has done in his life. So let's welcome Jared. Hello, good afternoon or good morning. And, and good morning, Jared. Boy, we had such major confusion on our communication, didn't we? <laughs> oh, that's all good. That's all good. <clears throat> so, um, Jared, I have been excited for this uh, interview. I have been following you, listening to your podcast, and really a lot of it was just learning how you roll in your podcast and how smoothly things go and how you just... You flow so easily as a fellow podcaster. And so that first was what drew me in. And then on top of that, I was like, no way, Jared's a veteran. Okay, he's got me now, (laughs) you know. And um, so, you know, and then, of course, it was just your heart. And and you have a heart for the Lord is just amazing. And you could see it, you know, in your shows and what you do. So I just really appreciate you as a veteran and a fellow podcaster and what you're doing for the Lord. So thank you so um, very much. It's an honor. Thank you. So, um, Jared, I have like looked at a lot of your stuff and and what I wanted to do today is just kind of just go, how, how did you come to the Lord type of thing? And, um, talk a little bit about your military service, how long, what did you know, what you did, just the basics in that. And then how you were drawn towards your ministry now and where your goals are and uh, in your ministry. So um, I'll just leave it to you. Let you go ahead and share. And then I'll just chime in as as a listener and just ask you questions. Yeah. Okay, great. So we're already recording. <laughs> yes. I just awesome. I do all my introduction and I say, go, let's bring him in on the spot. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm excited to be on your podcast. and. Um, it's an, always an honor to be with, you know, talk about my story, to talk about Jesus, share my testimony in him and what he's done in my life mm-hmm. and what he's doing in other people's lives. Cause I just want him to get all the credit, all the glory, all the praise. Exactly. You know, uh, it's his power through us, his ability, his strength. So I'm Jared Lasky of Fireborn Ministries. I've been married for 21 years, got four mm-hmm. amazing kids. One is about to go off on the mission field with youth with a mission. I saw that. Lausanne, Switzerland, headed to Madagascar for a couple months. Wow. So um, I came to the Lord. I was raised in a Christian home, uh-huh. but it was in a church that didn't really know nor understand the supernatural or the spiritual gifts. Right. And 
there are some pastors that actually talked against it through that time. Mm. We we unfortunately mm. had gone through uh, numerous pastors over over some years. Like we had a thriving ministry when I was a kid in that church growing up, mm-hmm. but then uh, that pastor moved on to greener pastures, I guess. And you know, then mm-hmm. we, we went through uh, interim pastors and other pastors. But God was speaking to me at a young age, since I was about 12 or 13, in prophetic dreams. Wow. Dreams that would happen. And uh, the fruit was was good. Some some mm-hmm. of them were warnings or corrections and things like that. But it always pointed to Jesus, and I knew it was him. But I'd had a pastor who had said that God doesn't do that. But I was like, but God's doing it in me. Right. But when I was 17 years old, I'd actually had, it's a long story, but uh, my appendix had burst and just the mm. circumstances surrounding that, I ended up in the hospital for five days, but it was at the hospital, <laughs> even though I was doing smoking pot partying and stuff like that, I had this understanding of the Lord and I knew, <laughs> I felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I still had morality, but uh-huh. You know, I was trying to run from him and just do my thing, you know, try to justify right. smoking pot, even trying to use the Bible, which is impossible. <laughs> okay. Right. right. Because marijuana is part of the curse of the earth in, in the garden. Right. Because uh, weeds and thorns and thistles came about from that. So what is marijuana? It's exactly. Weed, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but in the hospital, um, so as a last resort, my twin brother and I were going to a, kind of a charismatic Christian high school. Mm-hmm. And so they they believed in the power of God, and it was a little weird. Uh, but I'd go do my thing at lunchtime, and you know. But I was sort of kind of in this community of faith of the charismatic, and mm-hmm. uh, it was not used to it. But um, so at seventeen, February of nineteen ninety seven, or no, actually February of nineteen ninety eight. My bad. Um, <laughs> I was in the hospital for five days, but it was there I felt the hand of God on my on my head. And I felt oh, wow. I had fire and electricity going through me. It was like this tingling throughout my body. And I knew it was the Holy Spirit. And I started having these knowings of who's coming, who's, you know, coming to visit me. And just, and looking back, that's the prophetic, right? Right, and right. There but some did it freak super- you out? Did it, you know, what did you no. think going through that? No, it didn't freak me out at all. Uh, <clears throat> because I'd always heard the story about how my dad came to Christ supernaturally Mm -hmm. and the church had accepted his testimony. Like the day that he and my mom were water baptized, Mm -hmm. he, they went home and he uh, wanted to smoke pot. Right. So he sent Mm -hmm. my mom on an errand. And I guess the story is, is that, so they were, my mom was pregnant with my twin brother and I in 1980 when they Mm -hmm. came to the Lord. And so I guess you could say I was doubly immersed. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, baptized in the womb and then baptized when I was eight years old, but water baptized. And then uh, as he was about to take the first hit on that joint, it was as if he was transported to Calvary. Huh. And he saw Jesus on the cross. Uh-huh. And his testimony is really like he saw the love in his eyes. He said his mingled Jesus's mingled body was there, but there was nothing but love in Christ's eyes, and that's what wow. drew him. And he's just like, you know, uh, I don't know how long that supernatural experience was, right? But that's in my spiritual DNA, if you will. And so uh-huh. my dad immediately quit marijuana cold turkey, got rid of like you know he was growing wow. it in his home, wow. got rid of it. It was radically saved. And the church was like, hey, yeah, that's great for you. Mm -hmm. But now those things aren't regular or consistent, right? So it's almost like Mm -hmm. he was, he had the supernatural experience. They accepted it, but then discipled out of it. Like that's rare or whatever, Mm -hmm. right? So it was a cessationist church for the most part. Right. But so it didn't scare me what God was doing in the hospital. I knew it was a Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And I had this Gideon pocket New Testament. Praise God for the Gideons. Right. <laughs> and so I was hungry and I, I kept reading those scriptures over. And, you know, when you're recuperating your spirit, you know, could, uh, you feel Just the words in. of life. Yes. And, and, yes. And so I knew that that was real. But I tried to walk out this Christian walk on my own, which didn't work out too well. Never does, does it? <laughs> so I got worse, but um, then I I knew in time through a series of events, I needed to serve the Lord wholeheartedly. And I had mm-hmm. to get out of what I was involved in 
And so I um I applied to Youth with a Mission and then went not knowing what to expect, <laughs> but the Holy wow. Spirit moved in power there. Wow. Wow. I mean, it's so, you know, when the Lord comes down and, and actually reaches into our soul, it's amazing to, I mean, it's like there is nothing that can describe that feeling or just that, that humbleness of <clears throat> there is something greater than mankind on earth, you know, that to be able to grip. I remember when I first got saved and just being like a sponge, just soaking in the word. I mean, every, the thes and the these and the thous meant something. It was just powerful, you know, to soak it in and just learn about who God is in the word. So, I mean, I could, I totally understand that, you know, it's just amazing. But, um, so you recovered from the hospital. You're back up and out, and you have this time with the Lord. I mean, what what drove you to continue on and, and to get deeper into this? I'd say it's the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I was in Youth with a Mission, uh, discipleship training school in Kona, Hawaii, uh, I got clean and sober. I went through some demonic attacks and Ah. deliverances if you will mm -hmm. and then uh, I, I was asking for more and I didn't mm -hmm. know what more meant I just knew I wanted more of God right and I remember we're on work duties one day and this uh lady from New Zealand I, these people were talking in other other languages on right. this earth and I was like man I wish I wish that I could have another language and she looks mm -hmm. at me she's like do you have this spiritual gift of tongues and i was like no i don't even know what that is i heard <laughs> it once at a church service or right you know, uh, when i was in ywam and i knew that some of my friends had it who came into ywam because it's an interdenominational mission uh, the largest okay. mission in the world right so uh i started asking for more Mm -hmm. More of the Holy Spirit. And I was like, speaking in tongues, if that's what you want to give me. Mm -hmm. And God was speaking to me through a lot of dreams at that time and unctions mm -hmm. for the next couple of weeks, even seeing who I would be interacting with later that day after waking up. Mm -hmm. And it was just all very divine stuff. So God was speaking to me quite a bit. And so for about two weeks, I'm asking for more. I'm asking for tongues, if that's what it is, not knowing what that really was besides mm -hmm. I was reading some books and stuff but I went to my small group leader Sam Sam Park and he I told him everything that God was doing mm -hmm. and he's like oh so you want to speak in tongues I was like sure whatever that is yeah right <laughs> and he had the faith he said I believe God will give it to you now I was like okay great so real <laughs> quick you know, I just asked Jesus to forgive me my sins. He had me stand up and he explained to me that he's going to lay hands on me. And uh, I'd already been kind of trained in YOM to hear God's voice, his still uh -huh. small voice. So right. I'd even prophesied a couple of times just by hearing that voice, the, the voice of the Holy Spirit, you know, through scripture and, and things like that. So brand new to all this stuff. And so he said, I might here in my spiritual ears, the Holy Spirit will give me a syllable or a phrase in a language I don't know, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Or or I might see it in my mind, and then I'm mm -hmm. to start speaking that out by faith and repeating it. And so he led me in a quick prayer of Jesus, will you baptize me with the Holy Spirit? Will wow. You give me tongues. And then I start shaking under the power of the Holy Spirit. And in my spiritual ears, I heard one syllable. And then in, in my spiritual vision, I saw it spelled. And so wow. uh, it was spelled in my mind. And I start repeating that one word over. The next thing I know, the fire and love and power of the Holy Spirit came through me. It was like a light came out of my mouth as I'm speaking in tongues, praising Jesus. 
Mm -hmm. And the fire and electricity of, of his love was going through me as he immersed me, as he baptized me with the Holy Spirit, because it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's Jesus who baptizes us, but it's the person right. of the Holy Spirit upon us, immersing us, right, right. entering into the more, into the, opening up the doorway into the more of God. Mm -hmm. uh, too many people leave the baptism of the Spirit. It's just, that's it. You achieved it, but there's more. It's a doorway. Exactly. It's a, a, a guy I interviewed recently, Jeff Lee, calls it. Um, mm -hmm the doorway into the supernatural, you know? Right. Uh, right. And so for the next two and a half hours is, is what it seemed like, you know, praying in tongues, singing, laughing, crying, thanking Jesus in English. Sam was there still praying over me. I think he was just sitting back watching God. Do just this. watching. Yeah. I was almost slain in the spirit. He had to sit me down. Wow. And uh, as I'm st still just about three or four waves of power for the next two and a half hours. And Sam had the wisdom to say, Jared, you know, the enemy's going to say that this didn't happen. But pray yep, in tongues yep. every single day. And I was like, how can I deny? How, if the enemy tries to tell me I made it up, how? That's impossible. This was exactly. so significant in my life. And at the time, because I come out of the drug culture, I was like, that's the highest high. And I, I don't right. want to compare the Holy Spirit and what he does to that, but that's the only time in that time that I can compare it to. How could I go back? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. And so I said, that was the highest high of my life. That was most incredible. So ever since then, you know, been praying in the spirit and uh, every single day, even in, in combat situations in mm -hmm. uh, Afghanistan, especially I've been to Iraq mm -hmm. and Afghanistan with Marine Corps and then contracted mm -hmm. for Afghanistan, but mm -hmm. praying in tongues every single day through thick and thin. So Wow. Wow. You know, it's, it's, you know, to even go back and even look at just the dream aspect, you know, and how churches tend to degrade those things. You know, it's like if we even look in the word of God, you know, Joseph had the dreams. He interpreted the dreams. You know, there was dreams all throughout the word of God. And you're just like, how can we as a body of Christ deny that? You know, it just amazes me that they do that. And even even to look at speaking in tongues, I've really learned that in prayer, what God says to pray without ceasing, there's times when, you know, you're just like my spiritual man can pray all the time, even though me as flesh, Monica, I don't know what to say, or I'm at a loss for words, or I feel like I'm repeating that that praying without ceasing actually can mean Pray in tongues and pray and let the spirit man pray through us to every day, all throughout the night. And if we make it a habit, you know, I really believe that even our spirit will pray when we go to sleep, that our spirit man will pray in tongues all the time. And I have found such, such faith as I pray in the spirit all the time that I even feel strengthened and renewed, you know, myself to go, ah. I feel refreshed and feel renewed. I have no idea what I'm saying, but I just feel refreshed and renewed when my spirit can become one with the Lord and pray. And yeah. um, it's amazing to have that, you know, that, that double portion on you that, that you have that gift of being able to know and to speak, you know, prophetically, that that is just an amazing gift in itself too, you know, and for you to even have it, like when I was in the military, I was not even a Christian. I knew of the Lord. I was raised in a Christian home. But to me, I was like, I'm going to go play army now. And God, you stay home. You know, I, I didn't need God at the time. And that's what I thought, you know, but to be able to be in the military and be a Christian at the same time, that's like an amazing weapon right there, you know, and such strength to draw from even at times of combat, you know, to where I would walk out of certain situations and I'm like, whew, got out of that, you know, and I'm Desert Storm era. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's just amazing to hear those type of stories where you find other veterans that were Christians, you know, you're not the only veteran that I've run into that says, yeah, I was a Christian in the Navy or I was a Christian in, you know, Coast Guard or whatever. And it's just amazing to hear those stories because I never got to experience that, you know, being in the military and having my faith 
you know, it was a crutch to get out of duty, extra duty to go to chapel and all that. So it, it's, it's amazing to hear that, but, um, but yeah, like, like, so you get baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now you're um, given dreams. Um, what made you go, look, this is something here and to go into ministry? Yeah. So I'd actually thought that I'd be a movie director, producer, writer. Oh, wow. Took some classes in that. But I did actually two youth with the mission schools and mm -hmm. then two mission trips with them. So about mm -hmm. a full year I was in YWAM. Mm -hmm. And I'd surrendered everything to Jesus. Right. And I was like, whatever you want me to do. And he told me to go to Bible college. So I went. Uh -huh. And uh, I was thinking it'd only be a year or so, but it ended up being four years. I got married wow. in that time, but I also went through some tragedy, lost a brother uh, tragically. Mm -hmm. But when I'd lost him, uh, you know, he, he struggled with addiction for years, many, many years. And right. he did come to the Lord about six months before his death and recommitted his life to Christ, but his brain was pretty, pretty messed up right? from, from the drugs. So mm -hmm. after his death, it, you know, it's, it's like a grenade goes off in the middle of the family, you know? Right. Um, yes. Yes. So we all had to run in different directions. And uh, like my twin brother started going into prisons and ran into some very hardcore things that nobody should get involved in and, and, mm -hmm. uh, white supremacy and stuff like that. And, uh -huh. You know, um, he was booted out of the Navy, administratively separated after like 19 months or so during that, because mm -hmm. he was in the Navy when our, our brother had died. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I jumped into God. I, I started a community outreach center church in my small town in, in Lowell, Lowell, Oregon. And I jumped into revival. I jumped in the presence, in my pain, in my grief, in my heartache, uh, hours upon hours of praying. And I'd mm -hmm. actually made this commitment commitment with some friends of mine to pray in tongues for about two hours a day wow. and uh for about two years now now it's just even when i'm walking or driving right but during that time mm -hmm. i was like dedicated two hours plus other uh spiritual habits right uh, and i was the most full during you know from from that and learned a lot about the prophetic about the spiritual gifts just on my face seeking Jesus, I call right. it sunbathing. Some people call it soaking, but I call it sunbathing because it's S-O-N, Jesus the Sun, sunbathing. Exactly, amen. And so I jumped into revival and there was, uh, took busloads of kids to this revival that was going on in Albany, Oregon at that time. So it's the year 2000, 2001, and uh, got married in 02. And then, Became a youth pastor for a while in another wow. community, not too far from where I'd grown up and uh, did big events, discipleship programs and stuff. But um, I started feeling this unction for the military and I was 25. So I was a, a late join. Mm -hmm. But it was one of those things that when the Holy Spirit's giving, dropping these ideas in you and in your wife, you know, my, my wife confirms a lot of what the Holy Spirit's speaking to me. Wow. And I was thinking that the direction would have to be chaplain, but you needed a master of divinity. So how do I acquire that and all that? So uh, signed up, burned out a youth ministry. There's a whole situation with the pastor because people will fail us, right? Yes. And so I was young and stupid and naive, and I didn't really know how to speak up for myself at that time with this mm -hmm. pastor, but he was eventually exposed for his antics and oh. all that. And unfortunately, you know, um, I, I'd burned out, you know, right. I was just joined up with the Marine Corps, knowing all I deployed to Iraq. I ended up as a fuel radio operator with the infantry and went to Iraq and, uh, with second battalion, eighth Marines and, mm -hmm. uh, I was a forward air controller radio operator. So I learned a lot with, with those guys with air support and all that. Um, didn't have much happen in Iraq. There was a situation. We, we do have a Corporal Yale. There's a, a short movie about uh, how he saved 30 people, but he lost his life. Uh, uh, Corporal Yale, he got the Navy Cross, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a petition for the Congressional Medal of Honor, but I remember that day. A 2,000 pound IED went off, shook everything. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I went into the COC to do my job, but Afghanistan was, was rough. Mm -hmm. 2009. Um, 
I'd been on over 100 combat missions, combat mm. out of my platoon of 26, 16 were blown up in an IED through that mm. the course of that. We were all, you know, uh, we all lived, but we came home mm -hmm. different. Oh yeah. And, uh, so I was always the vehicle cause I was the personal, uh, radio operator to the battalion commander mm -hmm. and we we're his personal security details. So anything and everything, you name it, we did it. We even relieved people for days at a time on the front. And I mean, really Afghanistan, the front is everywhere. Yes. But uh, over 100 combat missions uh, came home and met my twins. I had twins at that time. So they were about Aww. six months old. But within 90 days, the, the darkness came in. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, yeah, that it was darkness for many, many years. Right. I got out of the Marine Corps in 2010 and started youth pastoring again, still walking through post-traumatic stress disorder. But the church mm -hmm. believed in us, the pastor. When I, when I was like, I've been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, traumatic brain injury from a friendly fire incident. Uh, and that story is in Joan Hunter's book, Miracles for Veterans. Uh -huh. Um but the darkness was there. But that pastor looked at me. He's like, Jared, there's nothing in you that scares me. Man. Wow. You know, we need we need more ministers to believe in people. Even exactly. If wow. Yeah. And sometimes God heals people through us while we're still needing healing. Exactly. I know and it. I, and it's also therapeutic for us, too, to serve. Yes. And, uh, you know, too often I think churches are like, they label people. They're like, you're broken. You can't do this for now. I actually Damaged. let them do it. Jim Baker, yep. the televangelist from the 80s, yes. he got out of prison. He plugged into a dream center in, in Los Angeles under yep. uh, one of the Barnett's, Barnett's sons. Mm -hmm. And Jim was like, I'll be here for a couple of days. And then he's like, can I be here for a couple of weeks? And then he was there for long term serving mm -hmm. people. And now yeah. he's back to televangelism and stuff. So mm -hmm. we need healing and healing sometimes is ongoing. So, um, yeah, I think... Uh, I needed that for that time, you know? Yeah. I needed yeah. that ministry for five years as a youth pastor in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Isn't it strange how, you know, we, you know, I can only attribute it to certain things that I've seen along life where you, you see movies where veterans come home and they end up going and, and people kind of draw them in to help serve in different areas of life, whether it's, you know, in community or in church and how they open up and heal. And then when we, we do the same thing, getting involved in certain things, you know, I remember being pulled into a women's ministry. And at first I was like, no, no, no. I just wanted to throw my hoodie on and, you know, stay to myself. And it was through the ministry that I started opening up and breathing and being that, that rose again, where you're like, I can breathe, you know, and it's amazing to see that the community really does care about veterans and healing them and helping them to move out of the darkness and that there is life out there after what we have all experienced, you know, mm -hmm. and um, it, it's, it's amazing. But you know, now go God, on. I was. You know, God moves in power on the front. He does. He does. He speaks. He speaks to them. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them would, would be given dreams, and they would come to me, knowing that God interprets dreams through me. And, wow. You know, some people from the front would come to the rear if I was there uh, when I was in Iraq, and they'd be like, "Hey, I heard that you interpret dreams," and I would say, "Well, God does it through me." And <laughs> you know, just so like Joseph, that, that was. A lot. And then my roommate, yeah. when, because in, in Iraq, we lived in what we call the cans. And my mm -hmm. roommate received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And I hadn't seen that happen for some years through me. Wow. And I just wept. I just wept. I was like, Jesus, you used me. You know, like, wow, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was a normal occurrence in my ministry. And to this day, it still is. And, mm -hmm. uh, but that's to Marines, rough and tumble, gruff Marines. Right. Then, <laughs> Rough Marines. I'll give you credit, Marines. <laughs> you know, well, thank you for your service. And you know, I'm I'm not you when you get out of the service, you realize every branch has its job. They got their thing yes. to do. The competition yes. is out. Everybody's got a job. Like a friend of mine just retired from the Air Force after twenty years. He's like, My deployments were different than yours. I was like, Yeah, but you did yes. a job. You did exactly. a job that was needed. It's the same job. So uh 
you know, God moves in power wherever. I mean, I was leading Bible studies and stuff when I was in the Marine Corps, but you know, those nine years of darkness afterward, I mean, it was rough on my, my wife, my, my little kids at the yes, time, It is. but doing the ministry, going on mission trips. Uh, but then God, you know, I was in the process of healing in time. Mm-hmm. I, pr- I personally was like weaning myself off of the medications because they give you what is called a combat cocktail, like 13 or 14 yes. prescriptions. But I'm weaning myself off, and there are some natural things I started taking, like 5-HTP, mm-hmm. uh, which is like tryptophan. So it helps you fall asleep like when you eat turkey for Thanksgiving mm-hmm. and then become serotonin the next day. And uh, obviously talk to your doctor about this stuff before you decide to go on 5-HTP exactly. or anything. But um I've had people over the years ask me how I did it. And I was like, well, I was progressively weaning myself off, asking for healing, Mm -hmm. asking for a miracle. Like one day I went into these, this church for a a prayer. They were praying over me. I wanted to be healed of PTSD in like 2011 when I was about to go into full-time youth ministry. I didn't walk out with healing from PTSD, but I walked out with healing from the migraines from the traumatic brain injury. Oh, wow. Whatever miracle or healing God wants to give me, I'm going to take it. Exactly. So I, I go in for one thing. I come out with this other healing. I'm like, yes. So, so then years later, I had planted a church in Virginia Beach. And then that was great at first. And then, well, we, we ended up successfully closing it. But soon after closing it, I went under this transformation that I can mm-hmm. only attribute to the Holy Spirit and a very supportive bride, my wife, Rochelle. All right. Because you know, she's there still cheering me on. Still you know, there. Praying woman, you know, because 95% of combat combat veterans, I think, 90% divorce, I think. Divorce, the Navy SEALs yep. And special ops is like 95, 98%. But, man, she stuck it through, and she's cheering me on. And uh, What a strong this, bride. Oh, amazing woman. You, you know, you. I mean, I know of, as a, as a vet, I know of so many people, you know. I think the, the divorce rate between a church and the veterans, I don't know which is higher, you know, but yeah, I totally get to have a bride that stays with you during the dark moments, praise you through that, you know, and to still continue to encourage you after you step out, you know, that that's a strong, strong woman of God right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, she gets up before me and she's always doing her devotions before me. So all these years. Amazing <laughs> what a blessing. Women. What a blessing. And, and raising four amazing kids and mm-hmm. uh, you know, mm-hmm. their characters being formed big time. But um, there was, she was getting her master's in business. At that time, I'd completed my master of divinity from Regent University. And we had, again, successfully closed the church plant. And uh, right. then there was this weekend retreat uh, called Well. The Welcome Home Initiative by Nigel Mumford. And so spirit-filled Anglicans, which mm-hmm. blew my mom's, well, my, not my mom, but my wife's mind. And <laughs> I'll take that back. <laughs> my wife's mind. So uh, we, we go, and I had this stuck point. So I'd already been weaning myself off of medications. I was down to one med- medication. Mm-hmm. And then I'd had this stuck point. And I don't, we don't dig stuff up, but when, when things are brought to light, we, we need to deal with it and hand it to Jesus. So Nigel Correct. prayed over me and in this vision. So uh, the stuck point was where I saw this 17 year old Taliban bleeding out mm-hmm. and our doctors are working on him, our corpsmen and our doctors. And, and I was there, but I had this moral injury from that. And here I was a Christian, but I was cold. I had no emotions. I had no feeling towards this person. And I beat myself up for years about this. And mm-hmm. you know, there are other stuck points that I'd had, but this is the one that just kept coming up over and over this moral injury. But in this vision, as Nigel was praying for me, the doctor became Jesus and Jesus looked at me and said, I see you and I love you. Wow. And just this huge weight lifted. I got up. I mean, we're talking not even a minute, not even two minutes of prayer. And this weight is gone. Within the next few weeks, I realize I'm not taking my medication. I have no more depression. My rage is gone. Uh, you know, mm. the emotional roller coaster that is PTSD. Yes, yes. But I still had anxiety. 
And I was like, well, I had this friend whose daughter had um, epilepsy problems and she mm-hmm. was on the keto diet. And the, there are diets that help us neurologically. Right. And so his daughter had fewer epileptic seizures. So I was like, well, I'll try this out. Immediately, anxiety's gone. So wow. I was on the keto diet for quite a while. I lost 60 pounds. Uh, I started working at this place called Academy, which used to be the Blackwater uh, site before they sold out in like 2010. And then, um, I'll make a long story short, I ended up being a private military contractor and going Jeez. back to Afghanistan. Going back to Afghanistan oh, to a place man. that took nine years from me. Yes, to go back. But isn't it weird that he healed the wounds? Not weird, but amazing the fact that he healed the wounds, took away the darkness, healed every aspect of your life before he sent you back into the lion's den. You know, it's just, wow. That's oh, crazy. Yeah. Well, and so there I was, uh, been healed. I went there in um, September of 2020, mm-hmm. yeah, September of 2020. And, you know, really contracting is to make money, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do a job. Uh, you're with a bunch of other fellow veterans. So it's, it's, you got that camaraderie and that brotherhood, mm-hmm. but it operates differently. Yes. But I fly into the Hamid Karzai airport and they put us on this helicopter to fly us to the U.S. Embassy. And the, the back was open, you know, and those military things, you know, it's a short st- stop. So the back is still open mm-hmm. and I'm flying over Kabul. And I had, I'm praying for the city. I'm praying for the people. I'm praying for the Taliban. I'm praying for Al Qaeda. And I had nothing but love in my heart wow. for the people of Afghanistan. And my kids had actually written a book to raise money for a discipleship program in Dari and Pashtu. So we'd already been in personally invested, financially invested in this mm-hmm. discipleship material. So here I am going back and I'm there up until early 2021. And was leading a Bible study, you know, P, these contractors who are rough and tumble, some of them, whew, they really need Jesus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we're doing a job protecting the ambassador and other high profile, uh, very important persons in for the U S state department, you know, doing work behind the scenes there in uh-huh. Afghanistan. Uh, but I knew I was transformed. And so uh, Heidi Mortensen, she's a fellow podcaster and She'd had me on. She she's a psych, Christian psychologist. She's like Jared. That's like what we call exposure therapy. I was like, listen, I was just obedient to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I went back to this nation. Now we did get rocketed. And there were some other IEDs that went off. So like late November, twenty twenty, ISIS K, you know, sent twenty one rockets into the green zone. So I had just finished breakfast. I go into my room, which was a contractor can, and <laughs> the alarms go off, and we're just told to hunker down where we're at. And uh, I was just spending time in the Bible. Spending time with Jesus. You just know, chilling. Not, not not afraid of anything, you know, knowing, hey, I'm healed. I'm whole from this. And uh, sometimes we, we need to go back, you know. So I went yeah. back. And then I, I came home and, you know, I, I've – at that time, I automated everything, my emails, you know, automated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, wrote a bunch of articles while I was there, made some e-courses. And automated podcasting. So with podcasting, I I would batch and then automate everything, just schedule wow. it out. And uh, so a lot of people didn't even know I was over there. A lot of people didn't even know I was in that line of work. You know, <laughs> one foot in the ministry, one foot in, in contracting in the military type of world. But right. in time, now um, I'm serving him, doing webinars and seminars and having the most fun of my life, sharing my testimony, seeing God do what he wants through every, all the resources, you know. Wow. And now you have a son that's getting ready to go in ministry and, and following dad's footsteps. And what a blessing. What a blessing. You know? Yeah. We're, so, we're proud of him. We'll, we'll be seeing him here real quick before he goes to Madagascar. So that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so talk about, talk about your, um, your fire ministries and what you're doing there. And, and, um, how did you go ahead and just like make that step to go? I'm doing this. I'm stepping into full time ministry for the Lord. Yeah. So I'd always known it was in my heart, uh, in my heart to do fireborn ministries. Acts chapter one, verse eight is my life verse. Mm -hmm. Uh, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit falls upon you and you will be my witnesses. So Mm -hmm. the baptism of the Holy Spirit is pivotal in my life and also in, in, in my ministry, seeing people receive it the baptism of the spirit remotely through the laying on of hands through meetings mm-hmm. through conferences webinars the podcast 
And uh, so we'd incorporated it in 2012, uh, knowing, you know, and still at that time I was a youth pastor uh, mm -hmm. and just kind of doing that part time, you know, side hustle, <laughs> <laughs> maybe doing some church meetings every now and then some itinerating. But uh, uh -huh. then uh, even when I was pastoring, you know, still having a foot in that blogging for Charisma magazine online and stuff. But knowing, hey, this is going to become a full time thing. So right, here it is. Right. Here it is. We're we're doing it now. You know, mm -hmm. meetings lining up, automated. Everything that's automated is automated. You know, having the most fun. You know, mm -hmm. I'll be going to Iowa here tomorrow for a three day oh, nice. conference, and then we've got a conference here in Arizona, and then we're working on New Jersey and Alaska and some other place. And there's always invitations to preach in Pakistan. Okay. Wow. I've done Zooms for a couple of years, Zoom meetings into Pakistani villages where people would give their heart to the Lord, receive the baptism of the Spirit, receive healing remotely. Wow. Uh, and that's the work of the Holy Spirit yeah. uh, in those villages. Uh, but, you know, I'm having a lot of fun, you know, looking to do a startup at discipleship school. And then some of those students can travel with me when I travel. But uh, obviously, got to have a balance, uh, work-life right. balance, family balance and stuff. So Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But it's a lot of that fun. Is... So when you don't have to struggle with it, I know I'm in God's will. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. When when everything, I mean, when everything is just laid out and it's just following in his footsteps and keeping your eyes on the Lord, not looking to the left, to the right, you know, and even though attacks may come and will come, you know, that you have your steadfast hand, you know, in God's hand. And you have a yep. wife that's holding onto your hand and holding onto the Lord's hand. And, you know, what's that scripture about uh, three strands are better than one? <laughs> you yeah. know, it, it's really true, you know. And then to be able to see your son go and do the same. What an amazing testimony that you have. And, and um, but so what is the future of Jared now? Like, are you are you just honkering down until the Lord says, okay, I'm retiring you? Or do you guys have a goal to go, hey, we're going to pass this down to the kids? Or what I is think, Jared's? I don't think we'll retire. Uh, uh -huh. You know, it's, I, I think Rick Joyner and others have called out a refirement. And my friend Joan <laughs> Hunter, she's a very well-known evangelist. Her parents mm -hmm. were Charles and Francis Hunter. She was just in town the other day. Oh, and, wow. Uh, uh, so I got to see her and she you know, unexpectedly, you know, asked me to share my testimony that's in her book, Miracles for Veterans. So I did. <sighs> and uh, amazing woman. So she's 70 years old. She's not stopping anytime soon. So <laughs> she's not stopping. I'm, I'm not going to stop. I'm 43 years old now. And, you know, sure. Um, I know that things could slow down, but I do want to pour into the next, the next generation. And right. uh, this right. discipleship school, even my wife said, Jared, you could probably, you know, lead our kids through that and they could lead it too. You know, right. so, you know, that'd be right. like a three day a week discipleship school, similar to a YWAM discipleship school or a master's mm -hmm. commission. I'm not sure what they call mm -hmm. master's commissions right now, but uh, they, they rebranded that, but a six to nine month discipleship course, teaching mm -hmm. people media, teaching people how to raise money, teaching them entrepreneurship, but also how to study the Bible, how to roll in the supernatural and hearing God's voice and prophesying. Mm -hmm. And uh, in which is what our ministry does or laying hands on people, right. seeing the, the sick healed in Jesus name, you know, uh, the how to lay hands on people for them to receive the baptism of spirit. And I'm kind of chasing the sun, but whatever. I see that. <laughs> it's just moving, whatever. I don't have anything blocked off. But, hey, so you said sunbathing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So the, the future is whatever Jesus wants. Mm -hmm. Whatever Jesus wants, I'll do. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll obey. So we have vision. We have direction. Got some great people in our corner cheering us on. Uh, released a book, The Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Even today, I got this new kind of download about co-writing with a friend of mine. We we both admin a, a page called Speaking in Tongues and Interpreting Tongues on Facebook. There's like 40,000 mm -hmm. people on there. So all the resources we drop in that page is all about oh, okay. receiving the jump baptism on that. of the Spirit, developing your prayer language, interpreting tongues. Mm -hmm. And so I'd love to co-write with Malachi to lobby. I've got other book ideas. I've got a bookmark. I'm reading a book, and the bookmark shows chapter by chapter this n another book idea. So more books, more resources, more podcasts, season five coming up for Adventures in the Spirit. My, my season's going years. 
So <laughs> it's about to start the going into the fifth year podcast uh -huh. for Adventures in the Spirit. But it's not going to stop. It's all for Jesus. Amen. Amen. So if you had to sum it up, what would be your favorite course that you have on your ministry that you absolutely love to teach? Oh, yeah. Favorite e-course would be the Baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's the free one. Mm -hmm. Had uh, 2,500 or 3,000 people go through that and send in testimonies wow. of how they've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That course will always be free, okay? Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, the other e-course is entry-level prophecy. I also have one about my healing of PTSD. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. I, I need to revamp that, so it's hidden right now. But mm -hmm. I want to turn that into a book form as well. Uh, and That would be great. Open it up to people with all kinds of trauma. Because right now it's uh -huh. more geared towards Marine Corps or first responders, but I was like, I uh -huh. need to open it up for people who've got trauma of any kind, car right. accidents or abuse and, and steps to healing. Um, so entry level prophecy, how to hear God's voice and prophesy. That's the other passion of mine, which I do at mm -hmm. the conferences activate. Like the other week I was in Dayton, Ohio on a Sunday morning, activated a church to prophesy over one another. And then did two services there, you know, um, because we can all hear God. We can all prophesy. We may not uh, be called into a prophetic ministry or prophetic office, but we all have the same Holy Spirit, Monica. Yes. And the Holy Spirit can use us as in any spiritual gift at any time, but we have, mm -hmm. personally, you and I have more dominant spiritual gifts that we operate mm -hmm. in. But um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Favorite book of the Bible? Favorite book of Acts. <laughs> Book of Acts, of course. Book of Acts. <laughs> Book of Acts. Acts. Acts of the Apostles. There's so much in that. I'm currently going through Luke. Mm -hmm. And so I'll take three or four chapters at a time and read them you know, three, four, five days in a row over and over and over again. Um, and slowly make my way through the New Testament. Because uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I read through the Bible, I don't know how many times, the New Testament, more times than the Old Testament. But mm -hmm. Book of Acts, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. That's supposed to be, be the name. It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. And so when Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, all the healing and miracles that, that Jesus poured out, you know, it's so inspirational. And it is for today. Yeah, amen. Well, Jared, thank you so much for coming on this show. Thank you for sharing your testimony. And, and um, I do have a lot of veterans that are following me. So hopefully the story will get out to them and it will minister them, to them in a special way to hear a veteran that has healed from PTSD is, is amazing, you know, just to that community and to the body of Christ that can hear your story and go, wow, he is still moving in the Lord and it encourages us to continue to get up off the couch yeah. and go do what the Lord has said to do, to go out into all nations. That's right. And um, so I thank you for your story and God bless you, Jared. You're welcome, Monica. It was an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining us on Coffee Break with God, a podcast for anyone who wants to grow in their faith and discover the amazing ways that God works in our lives. I hope you enjoyed our inspiring conversations with our guests from different backgrounds, perspectives, and walks of life. So whether you need a shot of inspiration or a dash of encouragement or even a scoop of reflection, I hope this podcast is your perfect companion for a coffee break with God. Till next time, who's up for a second cup of coffee?